My name is Anja Eskat. I am the coordinator of the auditing platform of the Swiss Clinical Trial Organization. Myself and Christina Huf will present in the following minutes the risk assessment form, which was developed within the platform. Regardless of whether you are new or experienced in conducting clinical trials, this risk assessment tool will help you to develop a risk-based quality management system. Through the risk evaluation form and its user instructions, risk factors impacting safety, quality and integrity of your trial will be defined and mitigated. With this, potential risks are identified much earlier and you and your team will likely face less problems in the trial. At first, you need to recognize the problem. Then, decide what might go wrong and how likely this will happen. Identify which effects this problem would have, define the actions that should be taken, put these into practice to reduce the risk. The risk assessment form comes along with user instructions, with practical examples and a step-by-step -step guidance to complete part A and part B of the form. With part A, you can assess potential risks at system level, for example at an entire clinic. And with part B, you can address specific risks at project or trial level. There are four basic steps to performing a risk assessment. For each step, go to part A of the risk assessment tool to identify your risks at system level. And to part B for your specific risks at the clinical trial or project level. Step 1. Identify the risks. In each section, take a good look at the tools, equipment, materials and the processes or work methods. Write any issues or problems down that may potentially or actually cause harm to your clinical trial, your participants or your data integrity. These are the trial risks. Step 2. Rate the risks. Assess whether the risk should be rated high or low in accordance with GCP or any other applicable law and regulations. Briefly state your reasoning for this classification. Step 3. Identify risk mitigation measures. Now look at the precautions which are already in place. These are your risk mitigation measures. Evaluate each risk and decide whether the existing measures are adequate or whether additional ones need to be implemented. List all measures, but also defining deadlines and responsibilities. Step 4. Once measures are implemented, typically after six months or a year, check for efficacy of your actions. For this, review your risk assessment on a regular basis and document any occurred problems accordingly. If need be, Risks might be revised and or new mitigation measures defined. Example 1 is part A of the risk tool and illustrates a risk on system level and is defined as no quality management system SOPs in place. The risk itself is rated as high. The reasoning for the rating is as follows. ICH GCP Chapter 5.1.1 states the sponsors responsibility for implementing and maintaining quality assurance and quality control systems through written SOPs. Having no QMS in place would be a non-compliance with this requirement. Risk mitigation actions could be develop necessary SOPs, for example on trial conduct, data entry, reporting obligations and so on. Example 2 is an example for a specific risk at clinical trial level and captured in Part B of the form. The risk is defined as inadequate experience on site, as in the trial site team is not experienced or not qualified. The risk itself is rated as high and the reasoning is as follows. ICH GCP Chapter 4.2.3 states that the investigator should have available an adequate number of qualified staff and adequate facilities for the foreseen duration of the trial to conduct the trial properly and safely. Risk mitigation actions could be perform adequate staff training on site 
and at participating sites. Develop and use dummy case report forms for training purposes. Ensure adequate task delegation and documentation thereof. Increase of monitoring frequency to detect problems early. To summarize the completion of the form, the risks rated as high should be corrected immediately and any corrections documented. Low rated risks can be addressed at an appropriate time point or, if no action assigned, be explained. The sponsor should sign off the completed risk assessment form and store it in the trial master file. Furthermore, the sponsor should set a timeline to periodically review the defined risk measures and their efficacy. Using the risk assessment form will help you to address your study risks and comply with good clinical practice. Now that you have seen the functionality of the risk assessment form, you can find it and its user instructions on the tools and resources website of the SCTO platforms. For more information and feedback, contact the SCTO auditing platform or if you need additional help, please contact your local CTU. Thank you.